Peter Klossom from Bugs in Cyberspace. Wasn't sure what kind of video I was going to make this week. I actually took a bunch of different video clips. Got some cool footage of vinegaroons doing their courtship dance, locking pedipalps. I'll be uploading that a little bit later. It was just a little bit too good to <laughs> squeeze in today's video. Um, also took some footage of uh, some time I spent with my friends Jesse and Courtney here. They came over. Um, we talked about a trip to India that we're going to be making at some point in 2021. Um, it's been a little rough this year in socializing due to COVID and all of that. So um, it was nice to hang out for them a little bit and to uh, get each other excited about the trip. Um, in today's video, we're going to be looking at orange titan isopods and flame leg millipedes. The care requirements for these two species are nearly the same. If you have any questions about caring for isopods or any kind of millipedes, please feel free to comment or ask questions down below. Thanks a bunch for watching. Found this little bit of mushroom just outside. Thought I'd throw it in there. I think a squirrel or something had, well, collected it and nibbled most of the cap off. Left it on the railing on my deck. These are Porcelio Magnificus, one of many isopods I have, but rarely feature here on the YouTube channel for no particular reason, but perhaps that I follow a few other YouTubers who make videos about isopods more regularly. You can see that one specimen there. Half of its body has a sort of milky white coloration and the other half is orange, unlike this specimen here. Nice close up there. This one is molting and unlike other arthropods, at least all of the ones that we keep in the pet hobbies, isopods molt half their body at a time. And so I believe the front half has already molted and now the back half is going to molt very soon. And it'll just crawl right out of that back half. These are a species. They say they are the largest in the hobby in terms of the Spanish isopods, measuring in at about two inches long. It's a lot of isopod. And like many of the other Spanish isopods, they prefer dry conditions. Thought I'd feature one isopod in today's video for you guys, since they are pretty popular. Got this bit of bark that they just love hanging out on. They've nibbled a lot of the lichen, sort of stripped the covering off of this. There's still a little bit of that white alder, I think it was, outer layer. Got the mushroom in there. Let's see what they do with that. Got a leaf there and a bunch of other leaf bits. Just popped in some zucchini, a little bit of moss there. I had some fish food pellets in there. They were starting to mold a bit. And so I pulled them out shortly before the video. Not big protein feeders, apparently. And then I sort of sprayed the container down just a tad, but I'm gonna do that a little bit more before I close it up again for a couple weeks. Not sure if we have any truly large specimens in there. This one's pretty good sized. You know, when you count the antennae and those terminal appendages called uropods, they really do reach about two inches long. Ah, another molting individual. And uh, this one here, <laughs> Very long individual. Bye bye now. A little camera shy, that one. Flame leg millipedes. So pretty. Those legs are on fire!
Look at the wave-like motions of the legs. I really need to change the substrate out. For those of you that don't know when to change your millipede substrate, well, this is the point. You see those round pellets? Those are called fecal pellets. And uh, this specimen here makes it rather obvious why they're called flame leg millipedes. The coloration of the species becomes even more beautiful as they get older. And I've just dropped the zucchini in there. You can see that these two here are converging on it. A little bit of segmenting issues there on that particular specimen. Nothing that won't correct itself in the next molt. One burrowing there can see that it's having a little trouble moving through the substrate at this point because it is so sort of chunky and so it's having trouble getting its footing and burrowing through it. That's another reason to change your substrate more regularly. And then this one here, do you see how it's paler, this coiled one? Paler than the other specimens here in the video. That's because it's just about to molt, and they will curl up like this when they're about to molt. Their exoskeleton will take on that sort of translucent, milky coloration. And then a split will form along the midline, and the animal will come out of its old skin. You can see a little mite there, as well as springtails. The mite is orange, and the springtails are whitish pink. Neither one of them is harmful to a colony of millipedes. The mites are mostly unsightly. And the springtails, of course, are considered to be beneficial. <laughs> I mention him all the time, and partly because he's going to be my moderator, and more secondarily because He's just one of the great people in the hobby, but invertebrate dude here on YouTube is always very quick to mention to me that the mites that are sort of orange and fast moving like that are predatory mites and, of course, will help to take care of the bad mites or the grain mites that we often see in the colonies. Sort of no mites are really welcome in my tanks, mostly because if I'm sending these animals on to customers, I don't ever want them to see mites in their own tanks subsequently, but the predatory mites, those more fast-moving mites, they can sometimes be considered a benefit in what I call a bioactive tank in that they eat the grain mites, which might otherwise accumulate on the food and spread, almost in plague proportions sometimes. More common, of course, in the beetle hobby, more problematic perhaps in that hobby. Mites don't typically present a problem in millipede enclosures. Mixing up some new substrate for the flame leg millipedes. I'm going to make a video someday about how to create a good millipede substrate. Like I told somebody recently, and by somebody I mean like lots of people. If I never had to make another millipede substrate for a customer again, that would be fantastic. Especially these days when I'm down an employee due to those social distancing regulations. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna walk back up. That's a tasty looking leaf bit. I'm not that guy, by the way, who thinks that collecting things from outdoors is a bad idea. There's some pine cone shreds. Throw those in there. You can feel the sap on them. The squirrels are going to town 
on those things. Here's a few choice of bits. These are newer leaves, not as old as that one that you saw in a moment. I'm gonna break these up into smaller pieces soon, but they're paler, kind of thinner, translucent. Not like the leaves that come off the trees in the fall. And so they're not quite as suitable as that first darker one that you saw me crumble up in here. So I'm going to pull the flame leg millipedes out of the old container here and add them in to the new container. Gonna need this spoon to dig them out a little bit. You can see that there is a recently molted specimen there. I'm going to move that one first very carefully. There's a lot of springtails down in there. They'll come with. I'm going to put this exoskeleton in there next to that millipede again in case it wants to eat it and retrieve some of those nutrients that were in the old skin. And uh, now I'm going to dig out all the old ones, put a little bit of this frass in there just to kind of help establish that microbial balance that the feces may impart to the new container. And there may be some digestive components in there too that are important to the millipedes. Just a little bit of that, sort of analogous in a way to partial water changes in an aquarium. Just a quick side note here. On the top surface, it's mostly frass, or these fecal pellets, sort of rounded bits of substrate, you might call them still, that have passed through the digestive system of the millipede. But down here in the lower layers, there's still a lot of more edible substrate. But since about 50% of this substrate is now converted to frass or fecal pellets, I'm going to move the millipedes into a brand new setup where they can have more optimal access to nutrition. Just pop the slit on here now. Got this liner of paper towel there to keep the fungus nets from moving in between the container base and the lid because it's never really airtight. Good to go. We'll check on them a little bit later again. Nice and centered. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up, and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.